This is a 2022 Honda Civic Touring, the 11th generation of the Japanese brand's compact entry that they introduced in 1972 and brought to the US in 1973, which means the Civic was introduced to this world before I was. What? This new generation comes with new looks, structure, power, and technology. And with all that, this new generation Honda Civic has also reset the compact car benchmark. Yeah, it's that good. My name is Robin Warner, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and some say that I'm better at reviewing cars than shaving. Oh yeah. The Touring is the highest of four trims offered on the Civic sedan, above the LX, Sport, and EX Civics. Among other things, that means you get a 10.2 inch instrument cluster display, Qi wireless charging, and a 12 speaker Bose sound system. Touring models also join sport models in getting 18 inch wheels, but with a unique design, and EX models in getting the turbocharged 1.5 liter instead of a naturally aspirated 2 liter engine. That's right, the Civic Touring is powered by a turbocharged 1.5 liter inline four cylinder engine, producing a peak 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. That power then goes through a continuously variable transmission and onto the front wheels. The base price for the 2022 Honda Civic is $22,715. The Touring models start at $29,295 and my test car costs $29,690. For those that are interested, I included detailed specifications including dimensions, fuel economy, and options in the description. All right. Let's take a look around the car. Well, here it is, the 11th generation Honda Civic. It's grown, you have to say. This particular one is painted in Morning Mystic Metallic Paint, which is a $395 optional paint, and it is actually the only option on my test car. You also get these lovely 18-inch wheels because it's a touring model, and the sport trim also gets 18 inch wheels but they're a different more black design um, i think i actually prefer the way these touring model wheels look have to say it has a nice uh, elegant shape to it i guess i'll say generally speaking you get kind of like if you were to look at the design language it cooperates with the 10th generation honda accord that came out last year but you know I don't know, but it's generally a really stylish looking car. The front end doesn't speak to me too much with the headlamps kind of tucked back away just a little bit from the very front of the car. And the front grille just gets a little bit on the busy side, but I have to say that my videographer brother absolutely loves the way the 11th generation car looks. and. Everything other than the very front of the car, I totally agree. I love the way the car looks in profile. I love the strong character lines running across just beneath the side view mirror covers and the secondary um, character line that's coming up underneath in between the front and rear axle. I think they did a really good job to make it look stylish and kind of belie its compact car roots. It just looks like a nice car. I think they did a good job in back here. It looks clean, it looks elegant. There's no faux tailpipes to worry about. However, there is dual exhaust. One down there and another right over there. Nice, right? And I wanna go back to the front and show you a couple things. The A-pillar on the 11th generation Civic is almost two inches farther back than the 10th generation Honda Civic. So. You can see this in this quarter panel, the front quarter panel, there's just like this much, this longer portion of it right here between the hood and the door. And that pushes back and it's also pushed down low. So you have this big expansive windshield for fantastic visibility. You've also, when you step back again, look at that shape. Notice that it is pretty darn big. You were talking about beeline compact car routes. Well, this is 184 inches long now, and the wheelbase itself has grown 1.4 inches. So it is now 107.7 inches between the front and rear axles. 
In fact, uh, fueleconomy.gov, the EPA, rates it as a mid-sized car because it has plenty of space between the cargo, between the trunk and the passenger volume. With that in mind, this is several inches longer than an E46 generation BMW 3 Series and actually less than an inch shorter than the fourth generation late 80s, early 90s Honda Accord, just to give you a concept of how much these things have grown. Anyway, overall, I like the shape, I think it's sharp, and I want to show you inside. And let's go back to front. I'll show off our nice little key fob here. Nice and elegant, right? You get engine start here, which is lovely, but I'm just going to pop the trunk. 14.8 cubic feet of trunk space. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. You got a nice large opening to work with here and uh, it's deep as well. So you could fit plenty of luggage in there. Here are your uh, fold down for the second passenger seats. Plenty of space and a nice little grab handle to close the trunk again. Back seat space, you know, I just told you about how big this car really is. That means you get a lot of space in back. Five foot 11 and uh, I've got pretty good thigh support. I could go with a little bit higher, but my knees aren't bent too much, you know, around 90 degrees and I have lots of space between my knees and the back of the front seat. Uh, you also get two USB port chargers right there. And as long as you don't have a fifth occupant, nice little armrest with two cup holders. Thank you very much. And it's generally a pleasant place to be. If I sit up straight, I've got eh, about an inch of headroom, something I can work with here. So, and generally it looks clean. And because this is a touring model, we have a 12 speaker Bose sound system. There's a tweeter right there, stuff like that. Power windows, you know, pretty straightforward stuff here. But moving to the front, there's your door. It's a nice little trim piece here. You get power windows, power locks, all those things. No surprise there. Here's your trunk opener easy spot for it. This is some Honda sensing stuff here. This is kind of like the 360 surround button to give you a better sense of what the computers see around the car. Stability control on and off, parking assist, stuff like that. Here is your door, your seat adjustments. I will admit that I wish I had lumbar, but again, this is a Civic, so I'll give it some slack there, right? You do have tilt and telescoping steering wheel adjusts. It's manual right there. You do have plenty of buttons on the steering wheel though. Volume control. Here's your adaptive cruise control. Usual things on the stocks here, that kind of stuff. But because this is a touring model, you get the full 10.2 inch LCD screen for your instrument cluster, full screen, and then a nine inch infotainment screen down low. Uh, also, because it's touring, there's my Qi wireless charger, more ports for USB connectivity, and well, as well as just general power. You get drive modes, of course, any car has drive modes these days, and it is an electronic parking brake. Nice deep cup holders right here, center console storage, also plenty deep, and you know, all the usual bits here. Because this is a touring with a moonroof, here it is, that actually hurts interior space. So we get 96.6 cubic feet of interior space up here instead of 99. But, but I still feel like I have plenty of space in here. All right, starting it up, I'll let you see, there's what the screens look like. You know, they're clean. I'm, I actually prefer I guess I'm just aging myself. I prefer regular manual gauges, but if we're gonna have uh, digital screens, keep them clean, keep them simple, easy to read. And I think that Honda achieves that there. The display is off for the center console screen, but if I hit home, you can see that we get the usual array of options here, you know, all this kind of stuff. So plenty to choose from, plenty to do. Um, but I actually like the fact that it's easy to just turn the thing off because that allows you to stay focused on the road. We also have heated seats, climate control, of course. And then this is a neat little feature here. This is kind of like hiding the vents 
behind this grid in the center console. And by the way, we do get a physical volume knob, but the vents are built in to this grid shape right here. So that's a nice little design feature. And it does, you know, it gets broken apart by the steering, but then carries on with the same design over here. So all these interior features are nice and all, but that is far from the best feature of this car. I really want to show you what it's like to drive. Hi everybody. Well, it's been a long time since I've been this excited to drive a new car because this is such an important new car. The 11th generation Honda Civic. This thing has been around in some form or another since 1973 in the United States. That's kind of crazy, 48 years. And this one is bigger and oh, better than just about any Civic I've driven in a long time. The foundations that Honda built this car on are so strong and it just shows that there's not only is this car good, there's so much potential for future models to come. Hint, hint, Civic Si, hint, hint, Civic Type R, they could be really good. So, what makes this car so good? Of course, we have to start with the engine. In the Honda Civic sedan, you get two choices, either a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine or a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. This being the touring model, the top model, it has the higher of the two, which means it has 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. That 180 horsepower comes at 6,000 RPM, which isn't too bad. It's about 600 away from the red line of this thing, 6,600 RPM. But being a turbo model, you do get a nice broad uh, band of torque between 1,700 and 4,500 RPM. Now those figures are up six horsepower and 15 pound-feet of torque from the 10th generation Civic's 1.5 liter turbo, but Honda did a lot of massaging throughout that engine to like lower friction, improve ports, all this kind of thing. So it was just a lot of little changes that added up to six horsepower and 15 pound-feet of torque increase in peak output. Both the one and a half liter and the two liter engines are connected to continuously variable transmissions. However, the two liter and the one and a half liter get two different continuously variable transmissions. They have different gear ratio ranges, things like that. But neither have the option of getting a manual transmission. Sad face. However, Honda says that they will be putting a six speed manual transmission in the Honda Civic hatchback and they also add that the Civic hatchback is gonna have even sportier tuning and it's supposed to be a better driving experience. So that is encouraging and fingers crossed when I get the chance to drive that, I'll be able to see how well they did. Anyway, what you get here, especially considering that this is the compact car category, is pretty stout performance. I'll show you. All right, briefly slowing down. Do it a brake torquing, and off we go. <laughs> Come on. Really, really not bad. That's good, stout acceleration. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, it sounded like it was changing gears. It wasn't. It was just changing cone position between the continuously variable transmission. That's like this new trick to kind of make you feel like you're in a standard automatic transmission car going through gears as opposed to just letting the thing wind out. There's advantages to continuously variable transmissions like you can always stay in the peak power band or in the peak torque band and uh, you don't have to worry about changing gears. So. I don't know, it's kind of a whatever thing for me. If perception helps uh, make people feel better about the transmission, then fine, because Honda does make good continuously variable transmissions. They've been doing them for a long time and they're always among the best. But, you know, I think this like faking gear things is kind of a neither here nor there kind of a thing. Ironically enough, you do get paddle shifters so I can fake downshifting if I want. It's kind of a funny thing for me. The other thing between the continuously variable transmission and the turbocharged engine, 
power isn't perfectly linear in terms of delivery. You know, you get a little bit of hesitation at the beginning, that's no big deal. But then sometimes, not always perfectly consistently, when you get to the top of the rev range, you'll get this like little bit of CVT slip and this extra touch of surge of acceleration, which I like acceleration just fine. It's just not ideal in terms of like the pure driving experience. But overall, I have to say that for the compact car segment, that is a stout powertrain. And at the same time, I'm still getting 31 miles per gallon in the city, 38 on the highway, and I believe it's 34 combined. And we're on, you know, 18 inch alloy wheels here that are not necessarily all set up to be low rolling resistance and all that. So pretty healthy fuel economy numbers when you think about it. This is the least fuel efficient uh, version of the Civic sedan, if I'm correct. So, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot to be said for having such an efficient and yet still powerful um, powertrain combination. And of course, like I showed you in the walk around, you have drive modes, uh, you have econ, normal and sport. And, you know, these are purely powertrain drive modes. So it's just going to affect how the CVT is going to operate, like what gear ratio it puts you in and how aggressive the throttle tip in is going to be. And it's kind of a shame because I like having a linear throttle. So you have a lot of adjustability in throttle application, but I also like having effectively lower gears to work with if I'm in twisty roads. So the sport mode offers the lower gear ratios, which is great, but also a very aggressive throttle tip in, which isn't the best. But all of that was just a warm up, an appetizer, if you will, to the main course that is this chassis. Starting with the structure, Honda used 10 times more structural adhesive in addition to spot welds to put it together. So it's a like, you know, really well put together, firm chassis. It is 8% more torsionally rigid. So it, that's resistance to twisting. It is 13% more rigid when it comes to bending that's resistance to that kind of movement so what that means is it's a really strong structure and that makes it a great foundation for a good suspension now the suspension itself is still struts in front multi-link suspension in back it is four wheel independent which is good but you know it's not like we have control arms like we would in an Acura or something but it is a brilliantly tuned strut front suspension and multi-link rear. First of all, the subframe that holds up that front suspension is now stronger than before and made from aluminum, so it's also lighter and more rigid. And then in back, Honda used new bushings and also made the rear track half an inch wider to give you a little bit more stability to work with. And just generally did this like thorough overhaul of all the suspension movements, the shock absorbers and all the bushings and everything to reduce the friction and all the suspension movements. And really all of that is just a bunch of technical jargon to say that this thing feels awesome to drive. <laughs> I mean, I was seriously first turn of the wheel so impressed by how much better this car felt than a 10th generation Civic. And the 10th generation Civic felt really good. The 10th generation Civic felt strong and secure and stable in its movements. And this just takes that up a whole nother level. I'm, I'm seriously, for a compact car to behave this well on the road, I'm just wholly impressed. Okay, let's start with the steering. First of all, the steering column has a new bearing for the shaft that goes down to the steering rack at the front and it has 70% reduced friction compared to the 10th generation Civic. And then they just did a really good job tuning it. And then the steering wheel itself, it's got a nice thick rim, really easy to hold on to, good grip. The power, the weight, the assistance is spot on. The feel, it's not alive in your hands like hydraulics, but it's super precise, super accurate. You get positive feedback, just like you were expecting and hoping for. And you get steering feel. So with a good sense of what the front end is doing with the steering and then really great feedback to your back end from the rest of the chassis, it is super easy to drive this car quickly. You can go around corners. The limits aren't high. This is just a regular old Civic, but the limits are so easy to reach and so enjoyable to play around. 
Yes, of course this thing understeers. More than 60% of the weight of the car is on the front axle and it's front wheel drive, but it's not bad. There's really reasonable chassis balance. You can definitely tuck the nose in with a little bit of left foot braking. You can get accurately close to the apex. You can let the car push out to the exit. This is a fun car to drive, even though it's also a $22,000 compact car. Honda did such a good job tuning everything so that you have a reasonable compliant ride, perfectly comfortable on the road, and yet can still enjoy yourself when the going gets twisty. And I definitely enjoyed myself. Seriously, hats off to the vehicle dynamics engineers here. And then when the curves subside and it's back to living in the real world with uh, you know commutes and straight line speeds and interstate travel, you have a good ride. You also have, for the compact car class, good wind noise isolation and road noise isolation. And then for all the other things that you need, you've got all the tech that you need. You've got nice comfort, you know, the heated seats, things like that. And you also have all the safety stuff you'd ever want. You know, you've got Honda Sensing, which is what Honda calls their suite of driver assistance systems. You know, adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, and they've got like, you know, traffic jam assist and low speed braking and all this kind of stuff. They keep adding more features to it. But generally speaking, just think of it as kind of this cocoon of sensors and things that Honda wants to keep you protected, right? Then, on top of that, you also have 10 airbags in this car, 10. And that includes curtain airbags, side airbags, also knee airbags for both the passenger and driver front, as well as these new airbags that not only protect you in a frontal crash, but actually are shaped in such a way to limit the head from being able to rotate around in an accident. So if you're off center and you get hit in a weird way, the airbags will help kind of like cup your head to keep you from getting these nasty twists as you have impact. So there's a lot of safety, both passive and active in this car as well. Honda just put in so much effort to make this a great driving car and they really executed well. This is a, this is a great, great car. Like I said at the top, this is the benchmark for the compact car class now, and I'm so excited to see what other versions of Civics are gonna be like to drive. I'm Robin Warner, perhaps a slightly giddy Robin Warner. Thank you for watching. And if you are still watching, I would really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Those kinds of things really help me out a lot. Okay, goodbye. And this one is bigger and man, there is a person walking across the road with a dog.